Whoa, this is The Illusion reporting from somewhere on Spaceship Earth. I got a book review. And the Heart of the Sea by Nathaniel Philbrick. Yes, there it is. It's the tragedy of the whale ship Essex. Great read. It's got, it's got a map when it needs a map. It's got pictures to back it up a little bit. It's the story of the whale ship Essex that uh, sank in the Pacific in the uh, early 1800s. It was the inspiration for Moby Dick. And uh, because the, the ship was sunk by an attacking sperm whale, dude. Got one in. So yeah, it, it's pretty interesting. It goes on about how... Uh, Nantucket was basically like the empire of the ocean in the 1800s with whaling, man. It was Nantucket or people from Nantucket were everywhere in the oceans whaling sperm whales. And you read about it and you just, I didn't really realize what a like radical commodity sperm whales were for the oil to make lubricants and power lamps and so you kind of read this and you the industrialized nature of whale harvesting is pretty radical they get into it a little bit and uh wow we're lucky we have any whales left on spaceship earth because uh these guys just viewed it as a crop and they would go out and harvest the whales and they would deplete one zone and they would have to go on to the next zone so this is a kind of about how they made it around Cape Horn and we're now in the Pacific and into the big whale grounds out, out into the, uh, between Chile, Hawaii and, uh, the South Pacific. And this boat gets ran by the whale, like basically the one spot on spaceship earth that's furthest from land in any direction. And they have to take on, go leave in their little whaling boats and try to get back to land and they're they're like 2500 miles out in the middle of the ocean and it's a pretty radical tale like that these guys were even able to like survive some of them but you know they had to resort to cannibalism they had to eat some of their buddies of course they ate the black dudes first which i think is ironic and weird way if they weren't really into the black dudes like why would they eat them but hey you know what whatever no tell them what you're going to do when you're hungry and thirsty so it's kind of interesting so they instead of because they were so afraid of cannibals at the time in the in the south pacific they went due south and tried to get on the uh the trade winds blowing back to chile and uh they miscalculated when they could have really gone to these the Tahiti, which was relatively close. They went south and kind of fought the fought the current and the winds to try to do this tack. But they ended up down in Henderson Island for a moment and they kind of refreshed, but they had spent like 30 some days out in their boats. No cannibalism yet. And then they turn east from there and they lose. There's three whaling boats. They lose one, one whaling boat and, uh, that's Baby Al playing with his moose in the background. And uh, they're almost to land, but then they have to resort to the cannibalism. And it was a big deal back in the day. I guess this was like a, this was like their Titanic of the early 1800s because, you know, these people survived and they made it back and the whale attacked them and they had to eat one another and cannibalism. And then I'm reading the thing and I realized that it's just sort of a metaphor about today's world. Like, I don't think humanity realizes we're basically like lost at sea and Spaceship Earth is our teeny little survival craft. And if uh, we run out of food and water, we're going to have to resort to cannibalism. I mean, it's just basic one-on-one stuff. So, you know... When you read any of these kind of survival tales, it really does put in perspective how thin the veneer of the human existence is. That like when push comes to shove, we will resort to all sorts 
of crazy stuff to stay alive. And the gnarly part about it is they, uh, on one of the boats, they don't squander their rations. So they're able to, to sustain themselves much longer and only have to eat one dude. And another boat, they squander the rations and they have to eat like four guys. And the final guy they eat, they do what's called draw lots. So basically it's short straw. You get the sh you short stick, you get the short stick and you get eaten. And if you get the long stick, you have to kill the dude that you're going to eat. Humans, man, are radical creatures. And, uh... Yeah, you really, I don't know, man, it really turns you on to like whaling in the 18th. I'm into what was going on in the 1800s, man, because it's early 1800s, man. It was, it was the whole industrialized thing was coming online and humans were everywhere, but there were still uncharted realities of the human experience on Spaceship Earth. Like these dudes were out in the great unknown. And what's really interesting also is it talks about how like, you know, whalers basically lived out on the ocean for years at a time. Like, in, like these guys were on a like two-year mission to get all their whale oil. So they were going to live out on the ocean for like years, dude. While like merchant stock ships were just like A to B and they would just jam. These guys were planning on being out in the ocean for years at a time. And... There were no shortage of whaling ships out in the ocean just harvesting. And it, you know, the imagery that I got is sort of like they talk about the, the plains buffaloes when they would just like, you know, the, the, the buffalo killers or whatever, buffalo skinners or whatever they were, would come through and just kill the buffalo and leave all the meat and the carcass. That's sort of what the whaling ships were doing. They would come and just like mutilate the carcass and like cook all the blubber. And then just they would leave all their scraps floating out in the ocean, man. And, and you know, they would be sailing around and I guess they would be sailing past like, you know, big rafts of carrion out there. And it's kind of gross. The whole thing sounded pretty gross, actually, dude. We're just super stoked. We don't have to like whale as like a profession. I mean, these dudes were into it too, like super into it. But I thought, I thought it was cool that how this, this is the inspiration for Moby Dick. And another book I just highly recommend is a book called Ahab's Wife. It's about Captain Ahab's wife. It's a great read, man. Moby Dick. I'm into that kind of, kind of vibe. Yeah. And there's pictures of all these dudes in there and so like five of them survive this thing. Five of them spend, they spend like almost 90 days out in the middle of the ocean and they travel 3,000 miles, dude, to get back to land. But some of them pull it, but they got to gotta chow down on one another. So anyway, man, I'm highly recommending In the Heart of the Sea by Nathaniel Philbrick. There you go. It's a good read.